Whoa, what's up? Today's video is titled Lil Wayne Police Advocacy Continues on Undisputed. Now, if you new here, what the fuck we do here is read, listen, watch, and we block, talk, break that shit down. And you know we got to start off with our ignorance disclaimer. If you believe in cursed words and the blood of your firstborn is going to rain from the sky, you should leave right now. We only want mature-minded people on this motherfucking channel. If you think I'm hating hating on Lil Wayne or hating on his wealth or hating on a female presence around him, you should get the fuck as well, goddammit. Again, we only want mature-minded viewers around this motherfucker. And be sure to subscribe to Block Talk News, goddammit. And as y'all can see from the title, Lil Wayne is continuing his police advocacy tour, goddammit. Now he on Skip and Shannon Undisputed talking the same old bullshit he was talking to Fat Joe the other day god damn it and y'all already know we about to break this shit down block by block god damn it show the first clip let me begin by framing what i'm about to ask you about you grew up in what's called the holly grove neighborhood of new orleans which was patrolled by cops that you used to refer to as jump out boys because they had their doors cracked ready to jump out and sometimes jump on black people for no apparent reason but they ain't have no other people around. You got it. <laughs> you are witnessing a rebel network. Did y'all hear Skip? He just referred to the jump out boys. Now, I'm from New Orleans, so I'm real familiar with them. A few times I had a few bad run ins with the motherfuckers, even in middle school when I came home one day. A few friends and shit just chilling on the corner. These motherfuckers, I walk up, what's up, y'all? Blah, blah, blah. They just come around the corner and draw down on everybody, put a gun in everybody's face. I still had my school uniform on, goddamn. A ugly ass green shirt and some brown khakis, but you think they give a fuck about my age at that time when I was like probably 15 around this bitch? Hell no. The jump out boys is usually these extra tall ass, big country ass, rootless white boys, goddammit. They'll plant shit on you, they'll beat your ass and everything. One time I witnessed them beat a man fucking bloody. He was over 21 and he refused to just go in his house, goddammit. He wouldn't obstruct in the law at all but they beat him bloody and that shit changed my motherfucking life and r.i.p to him god damn it i ain't gonna say his name because that'll make it too goddamn personal around this bitch but skip went on to say that the jump out boys usually jump on black people for no reason and what did the police advocate say what did lil wayne say he said they didn't have no other people around did you hear him he said they didn't have no other people around that's because they go to where your fucking people are god damn it do they go to the suburbs with they fucking dough crack and slamming people head against a hot ass car and shit hell no even though they growing all kind of meth in the fucking suburbs all in them woods and shit you think they be drawing down on them hell no they be like come on billy get out of the trailer come on we got you this time that's how it is with they own god damn it but when they come to your fucking neighborhood and i know as i just shared my fucking experience with you they will come come out cursing you the fuck out they don't give a fuck they extremely disrespectful they'll curse your goddamn mama out around this bitch play the next clip y'all <laughs> but you told uh last friday a story on your new radio show which is tremendous but you told a story about one white cop who wasn't the usual bad white cop one white cop who became a lifesaver for you so take it away and tell us the story if you would please now let's block talk break down skip question or half of his question goddamn it cause we gotta make sure we get this shit clear he said you told a story on your new radio show which was tremendous goddamn it you know what that sound like that sound like he just not plugged Lil Wayne new radio show you heard him he said you told a story on your new radio show oh you know what else that tells me goddamn it that that story that you putting out about your uncle Bob aka your white savior 
nigga story. You using that shit during this fucking climate, this fucking racial climate to promote your crummy ass radio show, god damn it. And you're on the wrong side of history while you're doing the shit. You ain't saying nothing uplifting at motherfucking all. And he go out of his way to not be positive towards black people. If you ask me, Skip said you ran into a cop that wasn't the usual bad white cop. You know, some bullshit. I don't know what level they be having Skip on. So I don't even give a fuck about nothing he said, god damn it. He said, you told that story. Would you uh, be kind enough to share it with us around this bitch? Let's continue. Um, there's a cop in New Orleans. Uh, I referred to him as Uncle Bob. When I was 12 years old, I had an incident. I shot myself. Uh, I was in the house alone. When the police came to the door, I was able to um, slide all the way to the door, kick the door so they can hear that someone is actually in the apartment. Now let's read up on Uncle Bob, as he called him, a man who once fucking terrorized his neighborhood. Let's start from the title. Officer credited with saving life of rap superstar Lil Wayne, fired from Jefferson Parish Sheriff's Office, goddammit, in a tasing incident, April 26, 2012. And I'm going to tell y'all off jump, Jefferson Parish is the most ruthless racist fucking task force on the planet Earth, if you ask me, goddammit. Them the same way I already shared my story with y'all, but let's continue before I digress because they some dirty motherfuckers. A Jefferson Parish Sheriff's Sheriff's deputy has been fired after he repeatedly tased the Morero man during an arrest last November. And Sheriff Newell Norman said he wants to pursue criminal charges against the former officer, Deputy Robert Hubler, who was terminated by Norman earlier this month after using his taser on Laron Anderson at least three fucking times. Jefferson Parish Sheriff's Newell Norman has terminated Deputy Robert Hubler in connection with a tasing incident in November. A former New Orleans police officer, Hubler was credited with saving Lil Wayne fake ass life. Hubler picked up Anderson, 32, from his home November 1st for violating the protective order that barred him from contact with the mother of his children. Anderson said Hubler immediately began taunting him after he placed him in his patrol car. The two traded verbal barbs with Hubler allegedly calling Anderson a stupid nigga and asking why he couldn't stay out of trouble. Anderson said he began kicking the vehicle's door, saying he didn't appreciate Hubler's comments and he wanted to call attention to the arrest. Anderson said he also was concerned for his safety because no other officers were present. I don't trust the police because the police will do you anything, he said. Anderson said Hubler became irate, stopped the car, open the car door and begin firing his motherfucking taser y'all let's continue after the first hit Hubler closed the door and began to move away. Anderson said he then kicked out the car's window and Hubler allegedly told him, nigga, who do you think is going to pay for this? Obama, goddammit, I will repeat. He told him, nigga, who do you think is going to pay for this? Obama? Hubler began tasing Anderson again while hurling abuse at him, Anderson said. He told the deputy he felt a pain in his chest and paramedics were called to the scene to treat Anderson. Hubler's account in the probable cause affidavit Alpha David filed in the 24th Judicial District Court is similar to Anderson's, except it does not detail the tasings and racial slurs. The affidavit states that Anderson ignored Hubler's commands and was tased once in the chest and received treatment. God damn it. Anderson was booked with criminal damage to property. He spent two months in jail, but those charges were dropped. Anderson does have prior convictions for business burglary and narcotics possession. He has pending charges for domestic battery. Hubler declined to comment Wednesday, saying that on advice from his attorney, I am not going to comment. The incident was reviewed by Sheriff's Office 
by the sheriff's office, which is protocol, and no wrongdoings was found. But Norman said he became overwhelmingly concerned after watching a video of the incident because he believes Hubler used the taser three more motherfucking times than what was warranted. It appears Anderson was tased four times. Norman said he did not hear any racial slurs on the video, but he saw Hubler issuing unfucking necessary warnings to stop resisting before firing the weapon because y'all know how the fuck they do stop resisting stop resisting while beating the shit out of us all the time that's just not a fucking comedic skit god damn it that ain't just put there for a joke by fucking black comedians this shit actually happens but let's continue the video reveals reveals clearly that he's not resisting on missy I will repeat, the video reveals clearly that he's not resisting, Norman said. The sheriff said he believes Hubler ordered those commands in an attempt to justify the motherfucking tasing. Norman said he will conduct an internal investigation into why Hubler's actions were cleared of wrongdoing, despite evidence there were problems, goddammit. That investigation will commence after a criminal investigation into Hubler's actions. Norman said and his office has told the Jefferson Parish District Attorney's Office it wants to pursue criminal charges. And if that office declines to prosecute, he will forward the case to the FBI to investigate for possible civil rights violations. Hubler has not been arrested. Norman said officials would like to discuss the incident with Anderson, whom they have not been able to contact. Dude ain't trying to talk to y'all silly ass. Hubler worked for the New Orleans Police Department before joining the Jefferson Parish Sheriff's Office in May of 2009. That year, Hubler was featured in a documentary about Grammy Award-winning coon rap superstar Lil Wayne, the musician whose real name is Dwayne Carter, accidentally, well, you mean committed, well, he attempted suicide in the chest while playing with a handgun in 1994, and Hubler helped rush the 12-year-old Carter to the hospital. Hubler was awarded a life saving pin for his actions. You heard that bullshit? While witnessing the Rebel Network, you heard what the fuck he said? They gave that boy a fucking medal for his bravery. And look how racist his ass is telling a man, stupid nigga, why you can't stay out of trouble, god damn it. Ain't even professional, told the dude, nigga, who you think gonna pay for this, Obama? That let you know he racist as fuck. But Lil Wayne, he ain't put that in there. He ain't follow up on his old Uncle Bob. He ain't check in with his uncle, I guess, to see what type of racist the mother fucker was up there talking about stop resisting while he tase a nigga about four times god damn it but let's continue with the little dumb ass story you did because i told y'all we block talk breaking it all the way down god damn it play the next clip they was like someone's in there they knocked the door off the hinges i was right there on the floor they all just jumped right over me that's their job i guess and did what they had to do now, did y'all hear the police advocate, goddammit? He said after they said somebody in there, they proceeded to jump over him once they got in there, goddammit. They was jumping over a fucking 12-year-old kid who was bleeding profusely. And look at him. He was still helping up for him, y'all. Because right after that, he said, that's their job. No, Lil Wayne, that is not their fucking job to jump over a kid in search of a fucking weapon, goddammit. That is not their job. Wouldn't that? The hell is wrong with you god damn it and some of y'all just be thinking that somebody exposing shit or talking about these people just to be talking about them i'm talking about these people because they are directly the motherfucking enemy of us god damn it he trying to create more people to think how he think thinking it's our fault and blame ourselves and all of that dumb bullshit god damn it he said they did what they had to do and all of that no they didn't what they had to do was try to save your motherfucking fucking life not go bum rushing through a house just because they won't find guns or drugs you telling me them doing what they have to do is letting you bleed to death because they need a gun or drugs that motherfucking bad they couldn't recognize that you had attempted suicide the gun had to be right next to you goddamn it so what they mean oh they found a gun i found a gun and all of that bullshit yeah he shot himself he attempted suicide y'all so how far did the 
police have to go in order to find this fucking weapon. But let's continue as they jump over a bleeding child. And so one guy ran, he ran, everybody just running up to, you know, running up, meeting me at the door and jumping over. The one guy came, he's like, do nobody see this child? Do nobody see this baby on the floor with this hole in his chest? And it was like, yes, 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 but we, we, I found the gun. I found the gun. You all witnessing the Rebel Network. Do y'all hear this shit that further proves my motherfucking point, y'all? He points out the one guy who stopped and saved his fucking life. But what he not gonna point out is all the people who jumped over him. God damn it, you heard him. They was leaving him at the door and jumping right the fuck over a 12-year-old kid. And then it took that one savior who walked up and said, y'all don't see this motherfucking kid with a hole in his chest? Ain't that a bitch like i don't give a fuck who you is if you got a hole in your chest i'ma stop that shit is alarming to me i don't give a fuck if i walk through anybody don't I give a fuck if you asian puerto rican or anything if somebody on the floor bleeding from the chest soon as i walk in that bitch i'm calling 911 immediately but here we have 911 hopping directly over a 12 year old kid who bleeding fucking profusely and it took one guy to say y'all don't see this fucking baby with a hole in his goddamn chest a goddamn kid with a hole in his chest with blood on his motherfucking chest blood on his shirt blood on the fucking flow and look just let him continue before i go to rambling on and fuck up the story you did he said they say some bullshit about they got a gun y'all a gun Lil Wayne attempted suicide y'all the gun couldn't be too fucking far it had to be right next to him was he saying he got other guns goddamn it but continue with your fucking and save your story that's really exposing the shit out of you and the rest of these old puppet ass celebrities god damn it continue he was like i don't care what you found somebody and so all i can remember was him just grabbing me he was like they was like we got an ambulance he was like i'm not waiting for no ambulance and then he put me in a car he got me there that's uncle bob's story when that now did y'all hear lil wayne carefully god damn it did you hear him carefully after he finished reminiscing about how he was a baby dove and Uncle Bob held him with two arms during the Earl spill and shit like that, goddammit. After he said that, he said his Uncle Bob tried to rush him to the hospital, goddammit. But they said, hey, we already got an ambulance. And he said, I ain't waiting on no ambulance. See how uh, heroic he make his Uncle Bob. He said, I'm not waiting on an ambulance. But think about it, y'all. Last time he told the story. Story, he was trying to make him extra heroic too and he the one who told us that uncle bob said somebody just drive the goddamn car just drive now all of a sudden they had an ambulance and shit and uncle bob had to tell people he ain't waiting on no ambulance even though an ambulance was there and he wouldn't have to wait ain't this some weird ass shit y'all ain't this some fucking weird ass shit that's because these celebrities is bought and paid for they here to shape the way you think and get paid in the process that way he creates some more weak motherfuckers who think like him and they'll also listen to his weak ass radio show god damn it but let's get to the most alarming shit of this whole video to me this the most alarming shit play this clip right here and something i found out that i didn't have to tell everybody but i tell them now uncle bob is the same police same cop that put my father in jail for years. Mm. I found that out by baby seeing who Uncle Bob was and being like, wait, wait, that's Uncle Bob? And I'm like, yeah, that's Uncle Bob. Why, you know him? You are witnessing a rebel network. I will repeat, you are witnessing a rebel network. My logic is irrefutable, goddammit. Did y'all hear this clown? He just not said that baby told him that that was the dude who locked his daddy up for some years. I don't give a fuck who you is. If you lock my daddy up for some years, goddammit, you are not my motherfucking friend, goddammit. In fact, you my enemy around this motherfucker. He found out from baby 
the old coon ass that this the man who locked up his daddy. You never know why he was in that uh neighborhood. He probably set your daddy up and shit. He probably knew something else about what was in that motherfucking house. I wonder how fast the response was around that bitch. And when did he get to the goddamn house? But anyway, you mean to tell me that this is the cop who locked your dead daddy up? Your real father, goddamn it. This the man who locked your father up and you calling him your uncle? I don't give a fuck what he did for you. He should never be considered family around this motherfucker. Y'all heard him? His uncle fucking Bob, y'all. Let's continue to break down this motherfucking weak ass little boy, you dig? And he said, let me tell you something about him. He said, now that I see who you're talking about, that this story doesn't surprise me. I said, he said, because that guy always treated us like we were, we were his sons. So when he would come, when, if he chasing after, he's not about to bring us to jail. He's about to chase us down and, and scold us and take whatever we have on us. And, but if it's the 39th time, we're going to jail. You are witnessing a rebel network. Now, that's just fucking a shame, y'all. And I'm using this picture because that's how Shannon mainly looked the whole fucking video, if you ask me. Every time I looked at him, he was bawling his fucking face up in shame, but he trying to hide it. You heard what that stupid idiot Lil Wayne said, that baby said? Baby coon ass said that the police, Uncle Bob, used to treat them like sons. You know what the fuck that man was treating y'all like? A overseer, goddammit talking about the man used to just come and take whatever they had you dig and scold them that shit is illegal with that man dig god damn it he probably took your shit and planted it on somebody else god damn it or sold it to somebody whoever you bought it from god damn it the people who come from the boat and shit probably sold it back to them after they sent his ass to take it from you but what else you probably had that he took money i bet you that man probably used to go all in your pockets take everybody's stash and everything talking about in here just scold us. I wonder if he was saying the shit that he told that boy Anderson, goddamn it. LaRon Anderson, was he calling y'all stupid niggas who can't stay out of trouble? And y'all coon ass was just sitting there laughing or something, goddamn it. I told him, baby, I know you're not lying. It's because when I saw Uncle Bobby years later in the restaurant and found out and walked up to him and said, hey, he said, listen, I don't want you to pay for my meal. I don't want you to do nothing. I don't need anything. I'm just happy to see you turned out to be who you are and how you are. Now understand this, when that man told Lil Wayne lame ass that he was proud that he became who he is, goddammit, he was proud that you became a pusher of a fucked up image of the black man. He was proud that you became somebody who told us to kill each other, goddammit, shoot each other because we from different neighborhoods and shit, shoot each other because we in each other territory with drugs and all of that shit, do a drive-by, kill their baby mamas, don't stay in a committed relationship have sex with everybody fuck a bitch fuck a hoe and all of that dumb shit or he having sex with your old lady and all of that bullshit that's what that man was proud of motherfucker because you a pusher of fucked up images of black people god damn it and he congratulated you and baby as you repeated as you said he told you and baby the same motherfucking thing that he was proud y'all became who you is which is big time motherfucking coons and puppets around this bitch with that old bullshit. But let's continue with the bullshit from Lil Wayne, y'all. I'm thanking for everybody who's still listening as we break this clown all the way down, goddammit. Continue. And that's my story and that's baby's story. Hmm. People taking it, flipping it, and saying I'm this and I'm that and I, I that. But I can't, I can't do too much about it but live my story. Um, can somebody tell Lil Wayne ain't nobody twisting or flipping his fucking words? We using exactly what the hell you said. At least over here on BTN, we using exactly what you said. God damn it. We show the video, then we break the shit down. Ain't nobody flipping what your lame ass said, but continue. Years later, I found out was there was EMT there. And he said when he got there, they had told him that they tried three times. He said that was some kind of procedure, I guess, of this, that if you try it three times, it's that's it. He said, but he saw life in me. And for me to remember all the things that I told him, he was like, well, obviously, you were there. 
Oh, so now it was EMTs there, you dig? And when his Uncle Bob got there, they said they had tried three times because that's the policy. Three times and that's it. We don't give a fuck how you look. We have a policy of three times and we don't care if you're a kid or adult or old ass person. We about to let you die because we tried three whole motherfucking times. Lil Wayne, you pointing out how fucked up the system is, you idiot. And this Uncle Bob, how many times he going to say when he got there? At first, it was when he got there. He said, y'all don't see a hole in this kid. And I guess after that, they say, well, we tried three times. Ain't that a bitch? After he had that conversation, that conversation conversation with that dude who said oh we found guns and shit though we found this and uncle bob supposedly said i don't give a damn what you found this is a dying little wayne on the floor and all of that bullshit after he had that whole conversation you did i guess that's when the emt walked up to him and said hey we tried three times on the wayne you did you know we got a policy three times in your day but we can't try this shit no more because that's against protocol to actually try to save a life that's because the police didn't give a fuck about Lil Wayne, jumped over his ass and was gonna leave him for dead, bleeding profusely, and the EMT don't give a fuck because they tried three times, goddammit. What else do you expect from them? Let's continue. I think people have heard you say, well, there's no racism, and you're like, you're looking at it from a perspective like, okay, there's good cops. And it seems like you're willing to give, like, there are good cops the benefit of the doubt. Now, let me interrupt that part right quick. What Lil Wayne really said is that he never experienced racism. Even when he got shot, we just described how his ass experienced racism. Them people was jumping over your dumb ass, leaving you to fucking die. Even the EMT didn't give a fuck about your life, goddammit. You was experiencing racism. And whenever that man used to patrol your motherfucking neighborhood... Holding people down, taking their money and whatever else they had. You and those people, you and those people were experiencing racism, goddammit. And that man went on to say, you give them the benefit of the doubt. Yet they paint us with a broad brush. Because remember, I was telling y'all that shit last time. Lil Wayne up there, don't paint them people with a broad brush. You can't say all the police. You can't say all the whole entire race but if you is you gon' you gotta use that shit on black people remember he said that bullshit if we won't blame somebody blame black people he could use a broad brush with us god damn it but that's what shannon said before i digress he said you won't sit up there and tell us not to use a broad brush on them but they up there using a broad brush on us god damn it let's continue but it seems like on the other side they're unwilling to say they're good black people it seems to me like all black men are being treated like thugs, and they judge us, they judge one of our bad apples, they paint that whole brush over the entire race, where you was willing to give like, nah, all of them aren't bad. One you are witnessing the rebel network. Didn't that just drive my point? Let's continue. But that said, I'm willing to give Uncle Bob that courtesy. Right. right. <laughs> I wasn't speaking for no one else. Right. And I've, I've specified that every time I speak about it. I say, that's Uncle Bob's story. That's my story. And that's that. I don't, I, everything else is what everything it is. And I, that's all. I mean, people take one thing you say and flip it, so. Now, did y'all hear this clown, Lil Wayne? He said that he was talking about his situation with Uncle Bob specifically. Is it just me or did he not use that shit as an example of why we can't use a broad brush, goddammit? Because when he first talked to Fat Joe, the first thing he started with was his Uncle Bob story. Then he went on to tell us why we can't blame everybody, goddammit. Just like when he got here to interview with them, what they started with, his Uncle Bob. Bob, aka White Savior, goddamn story. And then they went on to continue, goddamn it. Don't act like you was just talking about you and Uncle Bob around this bitch, because that is not the case, motherfucker. By the way, quick point of order. I had read before that you accidentally shot yourself, but then I heard recently that you intended to shoot yourself at that point at age 12, right? Yeah, I was, yeah, mental health is serious. Mm. Yeah. I was a kid going through a lot at the time. Yep. I thought I was. <laughs> mm. 
Hmm, y'all notice how his uh, face balled up and how he started moving around? Would you didn't expect Skip to say that, goddammit? That you actually attempted suicide instead of the incident, as you called it, goddammit? You attempted suicide. Keep it fucking real. Because that shit lets us know that the motherfucking gun was right next to you. So why in the hell was everybody still jumping over you? That's because they didn't give a fuck about your life, little boy. And then he found his little out and well, mental health, you know, I was going through through a lot or at least i thought i was you really was boy you was in an impoverished fucking neighborhood you was being patrolled by the overseer uncle bob around this bitch who was jacking people and doing all kind of dirty shit but you as a kid was clearly blinded and you as a dog you still fucking blinded god damn it you was going through a lot y'all but let's continue to shannon a uh, question around this bitch so i could um give y'all example how this dude have no inspiration for black people at all god damn it but when it come to the cops he could defend them when it come to white people he got something positive to say but pay attention to this bro do you think we're gonna finally see the change the change that dr king and so many of our four uh, ancestors they fought for they marched for they died behind do you think we're finally about to see the change that they never got a chance to see, that we're going to finally get the opportunity to start seeing in 2020 and moving forward? Oh, I think any any positive change is, is still not enough. <laughs> right. So... You are witnessing the Rebel Network. Now, that was Lil Wayne time to sit up there and be uplifting, y'all, and inspirational. But what did he do? He said any change that come about this way, goddammit, it ain't even gonna be enough. You see how down he sound, how defeated he sound, goddammit? And he said he not sure if we ever gonna achieve what our ancestors wanted to see. You know, if we gonna ever achieve it. You see how down he is? He not inspiring people the way he used to inspire us to shoot each other and shit you did he ain't inspired us the way he used to tell us to take drugs and do this and do that god damn it cheat on this person have unprotected sex with everybody and if the baby come born with braids i ain't the paw and all of that shit he don't sound as inspirational as he usually do huh when he telling us nothing but motherfucking negative shit but with everybody else y'all he always looking at the positive it ain't all police and this police right here says Save me, goddammit, and these white people and all of that bullshit. But when it come to us, blame ourselves. We could paint ourselves with a broad brush, though. Not everybody else around this bitch. And what he said, um, he never even experienced racism. Get your lame ass out of here, boy. Let's continue, cause we almost done, goddammit. Right. So so I'm not sure whatever, you know, if we'll ever accomplish what our ancestors would have loved to sing. But I, I, I think, I, I definitely think change is coming. Did anybody notice how weak Lil Wayne sounded, goddammit? Because to me, he noticed that he sound weak. Think about it. Look what he was just saying. I'm not sure if it's going to be to the level that our ancestors wanted the freedom to be, goddammit. And right then and there after he said, I'm not sure if it's going to be on that level, he stopped and made a pause and was like, but, but change is coming. But change coming. It's coming. Because he knew that he sounded weak as a motherfucker. He like, man, let me not sound too down. Because I don't never sound positive about black people. All I keep telling them is how I don't see racism and all of that bullshit. And how we need to blame each other. And how tweeting ain't doing shit. And how wearing a shirt ain't doing shit. And we ain't doing enough. That's all black people hear from me. Let me just say, oh, change gonna come. Just to make them feel a little bit good. Anybody still watching this and not convinced that most of these celebrities are paid and bought for fucking puppets god damn it you must be insane let's continue so wayne obviously a lot of white kids through the years have loved your music and grew up on your music and shannon and i keep talking about how many white kids we see at the protests now marching demonstrating with their black brothers and sisters i've never seen anything like this 
You are witnessing the Rebel Network. Let me give you a translation of what Skip just said. White kids buy your music. So watch what you about to say, goddammit. And me and Skip, you did. Me and uh, Shannon, my bad. Me and Shannon, we always be talking about how many white kids is at the protest. Well, I hope you and Shannon be talking about it when y'all mentioning rioters and looters and shit. Do y'all mention how many white kids was out there, goddammit? Maybe they did speak on it or touch up on it and shit, goddammit damn it but guess what nobody else will cnn ain't fox ain't msnbc ain't your fucking local news not but everybody won't talk about the white people who there god damn it when they talking about how peaceful the protest is and how organized it is but ain't nobody mentioning the white people when they talking about the looting and who putting these fucking bricks right outside the stores and shit but let's continue as we wrap this bullshit up but that indicate a turning point, a watershed sort of moment where white America is listening to the evils inflicted upon the black community more than ever. Is that fair to say? Do you sense that? Y'all heard that clown skip talking about would this be a watershed moment? Like, you know, like, oh, they took whites out to the watershed and made them listen to the atrocities of black people in America, goddammit. Do you sense that, Lil Wayne? All he wanted Lil Wayne to do is say, yeah, I think since the white kids is out there protesting, they gonna finally listen. Do y'all hear what they really saying? Oh, since white kids there, they gonna go to the watershed and listen. Now they gonna listen because they kids is out there protesting supposedly you see how fucking insane this shit sound y'all when you really break it all the way to fuck down that mean they couldn't listen when it was just you pleading begging marching and all of that bullshit uh with the song we shall see again dance they wouldn't in the watershed then but now because they kids supposedly is fucking uh, marching, which we all know that is number paid people out there and all kind of shit. They out there starting riots and everything. But anyway, he said, since white kids out there, do you sense that this about to make a whole turning point and shit? And this how Lil Wayne whack ass responded. Um, I was I was in L.A. last week and I was I, they were protesting outside the room. I looked outside my balcony. And like you said, it was majority, not, if not white, you know, it wasn't majority black people out there. And that right there was, you know, I, I actually, you know, I stopped and looked. You know, so instead of just looking outside, my, I, that, that made me stop and say, wow. Now, did y'all hear this clown? He looked outside his balcony in L.A. and it was protesting and it was majority white, goddammit. It seemed like he didn't even want to say white. He wanted to say anything else just so he don't seem racist around this bitch. He said he actually stopped and said, wow. How that go, y'all? Break that down. He actually stopped. So any other time, he wouldn't have stopped, goddammit. He had to see majority white in order for him to stop and be wild. Think about it, y'all. He had to stop and be wild because it was majority fucking white. He actually stopped. You know what the fuck that mean? That he wouldn't have stopped if it was just your black ass out there pleading and begging for fucking justice, goddammit. He wouldn't have stopped and looked because black people don't wow him. That wouldn't have been amazing to him. Look at him. Just look at what the fuck he's saying and look at his posture. The dude said he actually stopped. Why you gotta actually stop? Why well, actually stop? and looked at the protest so any other time if it's a protest you don't just stop and pay attention to what's going on on a fucking planet you don't notice the temperature of the planet right now y'all understand what the fuck i'm saying understand that none of these fucking celebrities really speak for you in fact you can see most of them getting angered because you're putting them on fucking blast even that clown just hilarious talking about if you cancel everybody you ain't gonna have who you gonna have left god damn it we'll have left anybody but you fucking clowns anybody but you coons god damn it we gonna have the real ones left we gonna have the Corey holcombs left god damn it the cat williams them fucking me god damn it that's who we gonna have left but you and Lil Wayne them out here advocating for the police and the fucking property and all of that bullshit. Your fucking favorite celebrities is showing their true colors, y'all. God damn it. Once again, y'all holler at me.